Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go, uh, we'll look at this Lagrangian, and we're going to calculate uh, a conserved current based on its invariance under this internal symmetry. So I guess it's internal because the, you know, before we had, for the, when we did the uh, energy momentum tensor, that was due to I mean, we changed the coordinates. It was a, you know, translations. But here we just directly vary the fields. So I guess, I think that's why it's called an internal symmetry. I think so. Anyway, in any event, this is our, um, uh, you know, how we're changing the fields. It should be it's conjugate. And so psi, so we have psi is just a complex scalar field. And so we're going to let psi go to e to the i alpha psi. And if we do that, then the complex conjugate of psi will be e to the minus i alpha times complex conjugate of psi. And it's very easy to see if we, so every term in this Lagrangian, both these terms, they have both a psi star and a psi. So um, if we make this change, we're always going to get an e to the i alpha times an e to the minus i alpha, which will be one. So this Lagrangian will is completely invariant under this transformation. And if we consider if we say alpha is an infinitesimal parameter, we can do a Taylor expansion of this uh, thing. And our transformations will then look like this. So um, yeah, e to the i alpha is one plus i alpha. So, or uh, in the infinitesimal limit. Uh, so we get this, and this is yeah one minus i alpha for e to the minus i alpha. So um, yeah, so we have this, and from these we can calculate our. So this is our the formula we had for the conserved current. And so these are going to be our delta, you know, delta, our changes in the field. Uh, so what's different, the difference from last time is in this, in the, this case, uh, the Lagrangian doesn't pick up any extra terms. You know, we, we, for it to be a symmetry, all we need is um, the Lagrangian can have another term added to it that is a total derivative. And if that happens, then we have another term involving this f. But here, the Lagrangian is just, it doesn't pick up that extra term. It's, it's just the same exact thing when we make this change. So this f is 0, so we don't have to worry about it. Another difference here is, so again, we we, uh, this A here, we're, we're summing over the field. So we're treating, for a complex scalar field, we're treating psi and psi star as independent. So we're going to have two of these terms, one for psi and one for psi star. So we just need to calculate these things. So, um, yeah, well, so here I've just, you know, summed over our field. So it, we'll have these two terms. Uh, so, and this is very easy to calculate, so dl d d mu psi, so doing those derivative terms is very easy because again, psi and psi star are independent, so if we're taking the derivative with respect to d mu psi here, uh, that we can treat this as a constant. So that will just uh, immediately see that that will be this d upper mu psi star. And the uh, variation in psi we can pick out from here. Where we, and we leave off the infinitesimal parameter part. We just take out um, what's left over. So that's i psi. So delta psi is i psi. And then similarly, um, when we do this derivative, we get d mu psi. And for uh, the variation in psi star, it's minus i psi this time. 
And so our conserved current will be this. Um, yeah, so that's, I just wanted to do this example because in, the, uh, in this one, um, we have no F and we also have more than one field, so we have to sum. So I just wanted to show this example uh, where we have to do that.